Hi and welcome back. It's New Year's Eve so I thought I would paint one last painting for 2020. I've decided to take two of my photographs that I've taken from Cookmere Haven in the southeast of England and combine them into a sort of uh, loose painting which would just sort of show the River Cookmere with the South Downs in the background and a slightly more interesting sky than the one here. I took these photos in the summer, um, so it's going to be a summer scene. I'm using a quarter imperial sheet of Milford cold pressed paper. It's 140 pounds weight. It's taped to my board and my board is at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. I've just loosely sketched in the shape of the downs across the horizon line and I'm going to use a large calligraphy brush to roughly paint in the sky with some raw sienna. I'm going to start it off with raw sienna onto the dry paper. So I'm just going to get in a pale glow as I often do just across the sky here and then I will mix up on the same brush I'll mix up a mixture of ultramarine blue and indigo again quite a loose mixture I'm going to mix up plenty of it and I'm going to use that to paint in my sky leaving quite a few white areas for the clouds so I'm just going to scrub the paint in across the paper not worrying about the white marks and kind of working into the raw sienna. Um, if you don't scrub it in too much and if your paint isn't too thick you won't end up with green um, when the raw sienna and the blues mix like this. It's quite nice. I think it's one of the reasons I like to use raw sienna as, it, as, as my yellow. It very rarely mixes unless I want it to. So I'm just scrubbing in leaving lots of the white areas for clouds. I'm going to dip the brush into a bit more water and then just continue to sort of work across the sky, just blending it until I like the shapes that I'm left with. Because I use plenty of paint and because it's quite cold in my room at the moment, um, everything's still wet so I can still work on it. I'm trying to aim for some hard edges for some of the clouds in places as well as some really softly blended areas where everything's just blending wet in wet on the page. Now I'm just going to soften off a few more areas with my um, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush. It's a medium one and I'm just using it just damp and clean to just slightly blend out a little bit more of that blue and to soften a few more edges here and there, making sure, as I said before, that I keep a few nice hard edges which add a nice amount of depth and impact to the sky. I don't think I'm going to put in any cloud shadows. Um, I think I like it as it is. I think that's nearly there. Uh, because my board's at an angle, there's a little bit of paint pooling up there. So I've just mopped that out with a clean, damp brush. Now, I think that will do for my sky. The important thing now is not to touch it, to leave it alone until it's completely dry. So I shall now move on to um, the land. Next, I'm going to take my large Chinese short-handled bamboo harky brush, very cheap, just bought from eBay, not a particular brand. And I'm mixing it with the indigo blue and the ultramarine blue, which has been mixed with the raw sienna to create quite a sort of pale neutral green. Uh, which will do to fill in most of the landscape. I'm just going to sweep it in across sort of mostly the horizontal strokes using my harky brush, trying to sort of keep a little bit of dry brush sparkle across the foreground. 
Now just using quite rich paint and just the tips of the Harky brush, I'm just going to dot in a bit of, I say, quite rich, tube, almost tube consistency, raw sienna, just here and there, uh, just to add a little bit of texture and to start building up the foreground without using too much detail. And I'm just using um, a, a damp squirrel mop just to soften the far riverbank a little bit more. Now I'm just going to use the tips of the large Chinese Haki brush again um, and dipping that into a rich mixture of sepia and just going to use that just to define some sort of shadow areas on the banks and in the foreground. We'll try not to overdo this. Just going to darken up the foreground a bit and just get that in as like an underpainting. Just dot a few bits here and there, just a little bit on the far bank to just to start off the idea of some some shadow and a little bit of contrast now I've just got a bit of um, rich green made up of the two blues and raw sienna and on the flat brush a small flat brush I'm just going to dot that here and there just to add a little bit of darker green I'm being careful not to put in too much detail at this stage because I want this to be a nice, simple, loose painting. Um, so I think that will just about do. A bit more there. Now I'm going to leave it to dry completely. Right, it's now completely dry. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a sort of pale uh, but slightly bluish green from those colours. I've still got the green there. I'm just going to add it, a little bit of blue to it, make it quite watery. And using this, um, the medium Harky brush, just going to paint in um, those distant hills, the South Downs. If you paint the distance in sort of pale with a slightly sort of bluish tone, it pushes it back and gives a look of aerial perspective and distance. So try and keep them a little bit lighter, if you can, than the rest and the foreground and the midground. Just maybe put a little bit more, a few streaks of colour in the mid-ground. Keeping the brush horizontal and just using the tips. Just added a bit of um, sepia to the mix, darkened it up a bit and a little bit more indigo. I'm going to try and put some trees in. They're diffusing quite quickly. I think they'll probably diffuse out completely, but I should have waited for it to dry a little bit. But I can always put them back in. I'm just going to now completely wet the river area and just going to try and get in a little bit of pale water and I want to try and keep reflections of the clouds and the sky in in the river if I can. I'm mixing up quite a watery blue with a bit of um, indigo ultramarine and a tiny bit of the green in it just to bring it down a little bit so it's not quite as as bright a blue as the sky. Now where I've um, I've wet the water area, so I should get a nice soft diffusion. I'm going to try and keep my strokes horizontal because that better indicates the look of water. 
I'm leaving a gap below where the large white cloud is um, of sort of unpainted river to try and um, show the reflection of the clouds. Just going to try and darken it up a little bit with a bit slightly stronger paint on the left side, keeping the strokes horizontal, kind of bring them in. The paint's all still wet, so it should just diffuse, maybe slightly darker just along the along the edge where it's catching some sort of shadow. Still trying to keep that white central air unpainted central area. I've washed out my brush and I've squeezed out and wiped off most of the water so it's just slightly damp and I'm just going to lift out some sort of um, horizontal water lines. Go back to the white paper if I can, just to add to the look of the water. So maybe wind ruffle or reflections. Right, it's dry now. So I'm just going to add some detail. I'm going to mix up a sort of darker browner green um, by adding some sepia to the green that I've already got, making it quite strong. And I'm going to use my small Chinese calligraphy brush. I'm just going to reinstate the bushes and trees in the distance on the downs. It looks a bit dark at the moment, but this will lighten up. It's not a particularly rich mixture. Just going to dot it around along the base of the hill. Then I'm going to have some bushes growing up the hill a little, then maybe some on the top. Just to add a little bit of distant detail. I don't want too much there, but just, just enough to bring the scene together. So these will dry a bit lighter, so they look a bit dark at the moment, but... Just going to put a few on the other side, on this other hill as well. Just a few distant bushes and just get in some sort of um, shadow lines um, just to indicate uh, paths and things in the distance. A few trees on the top of that hill too. I'm just going to darken up the bank in a few places here and there with, with a few touches of this green, not too much, just enough to indicate a little bit of detail, maybe some reeds growing along the bank. I'm just going to thin out those um, little ribbons of water and flooded fields towards the back behind the river bit more here there in the distance on this side. And just bring a little bit of green across the tape in the foreground here where, where, where there's some unpainted paper that I don't need. I can just put some green in there. I've missed out a little bit of filming there where I just penciled in a little bit of broken fence. Now, at Cookmere Haven, the river is constantly flooding and slightly changing its course um, and there are broken fences and gates everywhere that kind of lead into the river or go across the little streams and flooded fields. Um, sometimes they're exposed, sometimes the area is completely flooded. So I'm just going to put in one of these sort of broken old rickety fences and gates with sort of pilings that um, lead down into the river. 
possibly this was um, a field edge and then leading into a sort of maybe a maybe a bit of a jetty at some point or maybe there might have even have been a crossing of the river here but there isn't any more. Just going to try and keep it quite sort of loose and rough. I'm going to use my uh, one and a half inch flat brush just to put in the bars of this gate. Just makes it easy to keep, keep it nice and straight really. And then back to the calligraphy brush just to add in a few more posts and supporting struts for the gate, maybe a bit of shadow here and there. grass growing underneath it, old tangled wires, broken bits of post. Again, it's sort of something and nothing really, it's just to try and build up um, the effect of, of these very characteristic um, broken fences. Put some sort of just a, a hint of shadow underneath I think that's almost there. Maybe I'd just pull down a tiny touch of reflection of, for these uh, posts that, that are just sticking out of the water. Not much though. Now I think that's nearly finished. I think I'm just going to put in um, a little, a little bit more of some dark horizontal uh, lines with the flat brush. Uh, with some indigo and ultramarine blue, just pulling in across from the left side in towards the middle, just to to sort of enhance that impression of it being a, a moving river, moving water there. Maybe balance up a little bit more over this side, soften it back if it needs it. Just soften that back a little bit across the top there, pulling it across with the brush. And I think that will do. I think I'm I'm reasonably happy with that as a, a, a fast, loose painting. Let's remove the tape, pulling it carefully away from the painting so it doesn't tear into the painting and see how it looks with its crisp white border. I always like this moment, you know, even if a painting doesn't look that wonderful when it's finished, as soon as you remove the tape, it actually pulls it together and gives you a new sort of view of the painting as a whole, a little bit like if it's put into a mount or a mat. Well, I'm quite pleased with the finished painting. I think it works well to capture the scene and I think it's... Um, I've managed to sort of use both photographs and sort of pull them together to paint one of my favourite places locally to me. Um, if we look a little bit closer, you can see that there's plenty of um, white, unpainted patches in the sky. There's also plenty in the landscape as well, um, which adds sort of a little bit of light and life to the painting. Um, Cook Me Haven, as I think I've said before, there are lots of little lakes and streams and flooded fields so I wanted to try and capture the water in the distance as well as the river. Well thanks so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this please um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already and if you click on the bell icon you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And thank you so much to my lovely patrons uh, from my Patreon group who support this channel. Um, and Happy New Year to everybody and here's to a healthy and happy and creative 2021. I'll see you again soon. Take care then. Bye.